The latest releases of Risa Floor and Risa 3D include consideration for accidental torsion and eccentric loading for semi-rigid diaphragms for models created in Risa Floor and linked with Risa 3D for lateral analysis and design. This implementation is essential for models with semi-rigid diaphragms in order to adhere to the requirements for diaphragms laid out in ASCE 7 section 12.8.4.2. So here we're going to go ahead and start. We have two really simple kind of L-shaped um, models in Risa Floor, one using a semi-rigid diaphragm, one using a rigid diaphragm. And in these types of models where we have this uh, L-shape or uh, a shape that's really a little bit off of square, this is where we would see that eccentric loading come into play. And so the first thing I'm going to do is let's go ahead and look at our floor levels. And so if we look at our floor levels here, we can see that we are looking at using a concrete deck. So both levels are a six inch concrete deck. We can look at that by our deck definitions here. So we've got this six inch, 3000 normal weight concrete deck. We can also go ahead and look at our diaphragm spreadsheet. And so here, D1 is a semi-rigid diaphragm. That's over here. We're using a 3000 normal weight concrete material and then a six inch thickness for that calculation of a semi-rigid diaphragm. And then the other side, we're using that flex, or excuse me, that rigid diaphragm. So now I'm gonna go ahead and run the analysis, and then we're gonna transfer this model into Risa 3D. So I'm gonna go ahead and just run the results really quickly, and we'll use the director tool to transfer the model into Risa 3D. Now while we're doing that, we have the ability to add our wind and seismic loads. I'm not gonna change anything here, and so we're just gonna go ahead and click OK, and then OK again. Now, once the model is transferred into 3D, it will open up and we'll go ahead and start to be able to look at the loads that were applied during the transfer, as well as the different partial and eccentric load uh, cases that exist. And so here, if I click OK, I've got my two models. I'm gonna go ahead and get kind of a top-down view here and we'll turn off the rendering. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn on our diaphragms. So we've got our two diaphragms, our semi-rigid diaphragm and our rigid diaphragm. We can also go ahead and look at our diaphragm spreadsheet here. And so in our diaphragm spreadsheet, we can see uh, the information about the mass, mass moment of inertia, center of mass, and then also seeing that we have the plus and minus eccentricity uh, being added to both the semi-rigid and rigid diaphragm, as well as the information about the definition of the diaphragm itself. The next thing we can do is we can turn on the loads that were created uh, to be applied to this diaphragm. So I'm going to go ahead and enable the display of loads. And let's go ahead and start to look at, we can just look at wind load. Now this wind load is applied as our point load on a rigid diaphragm. We can see the same kind of load if we're looking at our wind load on our semi-rigid diaphragm. But now we wanna look at those partial and eccentric load cases. So I'm gonna choose first like our partial wind load. So let's choose like a partial wind load. In the X here, that's that first partial wind load for our rigid diaphragm. And that is applied at a node that's kind of outside that mass uh, center mass. We can also see the same thing for our semi-rigid. So if we look at our semi-rigid, we've got this trapezoidal load. So this uh, trap, uh, tapered load here for eccentric loading then being applied uh, on this structure. We can also see the same thing for our seismic. So if we go ahead and look at um, our earthquake load in the X direction. We can see this is our earthquake load at our semi-rigid diaphragm, so applied where the beams are for self-weight and where the columns are, and again, our uh, load on our rigid diaphragm. And then we can also go ahead and add our eccentric. And so we can see here that we've got this dip in loading, so this kind of staggered load here that is going to create that uh, eccentricity in the load or add that additional moment. We can now go ahead and look at our load combination spreadsheet. So I already have some load combinations created, but basically just the wind and seismic portions of the combinations that we would create using the load combination generator. So when we use the generator and our wind and seismic options, we have our X and Z with eccentricity, and we always wanna make sure we generate those semi-rigid diaphragm loads and load combinations accordingly. In this case, I'm just gonna stick with these wind and seismic specific load combinations so that we can actually see the results only pertaining to those potential eccentric loadings. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna solve my batch and envelope solution. So just click here and solve that batch and envelope solution. And then we can go ahead and start to look at our results. So let's close out of our node reactions. 
And I'm gonna go ahead and turn our load uh, visibility off. And the first thing we're gonna do is look at our deflected shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on our deflected shape. And let's look at our deflected shape for this first load combination uh, with, uh, let's see, we'll do this WL plus the partial loading in the X direction. And so you could start to see here that we're starting to get this twist that's a little bit more evident here uh, just because of the lack of the meshed semi-rigid diaphragm. Uh, but we can start to see that twist. Now I could go ahead and look at my view tools and look at the results. We could go ahead and maybe increase and we can start to see that twist even more. So we can see that uh, happening here with that load. The next thing we can do, let's go ahead and look at another deflected shape. So I'm gonna just switch my uh, load combination here to uh, this ELX plus Z. And again, same thing here. And let's go ahead and turn on the display of the loads as well. And so we can really see, and this is obviously an exaggerated direction, but, or deflection, excuse me, but we can really see that twist start to happen. And that's a result of these loads that we have applied here, right? So we've got this, we've got an increased load on this side, which is gonna cause that kind of um, right to left or um, counterclockwise twist in this particular model. Now we can also see this in an animation that may allow us to see this a bit better. And so I'm gonna go ahead into uh, results animation and let's go ahead and choose that same combination here. So that ELX plus Z. And we don't wanna display the loads in this case, but we'll go ahead and click animate. And so if I make this a bit bigger and start to try to get uh, kind of a, a view that looks straight down on it, we can kind of see this animation uh, at work here. And so we can start to see that twist happening, obviously a little bit more dramatic here uh, with this rigid diaphragm, but with the semi-rigid diaphragm, we can start to see that twist occur. And so we know that we're now getting those eccentric loads um, and that behavior in those semi-rigid diaphragms. So for more information about accidental torsion and eccentric loading in semi-rigid diaphragms, as well as other new features in RISA products, please visit risa.com.